Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Josh here with another thought-provoking episode of Keep It Techie, where we break down tech, Linux, and the systems that shape our digital lives. Today, I wanted to dig into a powerful concept that explains exactly why it feels that way. It's called inevitabilism, and I think we need to talk about it, especially in this era of AI hype. So this video is not a tutorial, but trust me, it might be one of the most important videos I've done. So grab a snack, lean in, and let's get to it. So let me take you back a few years. I was deep into my career, working in a large enterprise environment, and things were running smooth until leadership rolled in one day and said, hey, we need to start automating as much of this as possible like yesterday. We're talking scripts, monitoring, alerting, deployment, pretty much everything. Now, I'm no stranger to automation. If you guys know my background, I live and breathe scripting. But what struck me was the tone. It wasn't about improving the workflow for us or giving the team more time to focus on higher level stuff. It was more like, this is what the industry is doing. It's inevitable. Get on board or get left behind. That word inevitable stuck with me. Now, I didn't push back at the time, but looking back on it, that was the moment I realized how often tech shifts get framed as non-negotiable, not discussed, not debated, just handed down like it's law. So let's break down this concept. The term inevitabilism comes from Professor Shoshana Zuboff, the author of The Age of Surveillance Capitalism. If you haven't read it, definitely add it to your list. In short, inevitabilism is when someone presents a future as unavoidable and then tells you that the only rational thing to do is prepare for it. Let me give you an example. AI will replace jobs. That's just the way it is. Or you may hear something like, you can't stop automation, so you better learn to code it. You may have also heard something like, we'll all be using AI companions in 10 years. Now, whether or not those things are true. The framing removes your agency. You're not being asked, is this the future you want? You're basically being told this is happening, whether you like it or not, period. And now the only acceptable conversation is about how you plan to adapt. Now let's look at how some major players in tech are using this framing. For example, Mark Zuckerberg, I read a quote from him. It says, we are entertaining a world where we will learn to coexist with AI, not as its masters, but as its collaborators. And my translation from that is, this is an optional. Now, another quote, Andrew Ng, AI is the new electricity. Now, my translation of that is, you can't live without it. It's just like water. You need electricity to survive, which is basically what he's saying. Now, also another quote, Jenny Rometty, AI will not replace humans, but those who use AI will replace those who don't. My translation of that is, you better get in line. Now, pause. These are smart folks, no doubt. But look at the messaging. It's wrapped in progress. It assumes consensus. It also has a subtle threat baked in. It's like they're saying, don't ask if this is right. Just make sure you keep up. So here's the danger. It limits our imagination, in my opinion. If we believe there's only one path forward, we stop asking big questions. Like for instance, should we slow down and regulate AI development? Also, what does ethical deployment even look like? And this is a big one. Who gets left out of this future that they're proposing? And I'm sure this is an interesting question for all. Who benefits from it? But inevitableism shuts down those questions. And when tech evolves without critique, it evolves to benefit the most powerful, not the people. And trust me, it's not about being anti-AI. I use AI, I talk about it all the time, but I choose how I engage with it. I self-host it, I sandbox it, I test things out because I want to understand what's under the hood, not just go along with the flow of things. And that's the spirit of Linux, which is also the spirit of free and open source. And that's the antidote to inevitableism. So let's talk solutions because there are ways to take back control. For one, you should question the framing of a lot of these statements. Like when you hear this is the future, you should respond with according to who or reframe the convo. What should the future look like? And what you can also do is use free and open source alternatives. So 
run Linux. Don't just use tech on it. For instance, you could use tools like Olama or self-hosted LLMs, LM Studios for private AI testing, local GPT for local data search. I mean, these tools let you explore the AI space on your terms without feeding corporate clouds. Also, you should think about privacy and ethics. For instance, who's profiting off of your data? Is this tool designed to help you or harvest from you? Even just asking these questions puts you ahead of most people out here. And also you should stay in communities, join free and open source forums, watch creators who break down the hype and not just sell it to you. And also have convos with real people about real concerns, not just the new features that are being promoted or put out there. Now, you know what I've learned from all these years in tech? Just because something is possible doesn't mean it's inevitable. We have to say in it, every line of code, every piece of hardware, every system we build, it reflects a choice. Inevitableism is a psychological shortcut. It tricks you into thinking resistance is useless, but you don't have to resist alone. I mean, Linux taught us that. People said you can't compete with Microsoft. They also said no one will care about open source. And you can also look back and see that people said you'll never be able to run a full OS without a license. But look at it now. We've got full distros, entire careers built on Linux and massive communities, all because a bunch of folks refused to believe the future was already written. So let me leave you guys with this. What kind of future do you want to live in? Is it open? Is it fair? Is it private? Is it yours? Drop your thoughts in the comments. I want to hear from the open source users, system admins, developers, and especially folks just getting into tech. Your voice matters in shaping this space. And if you're looking to dig deeper, here are some tools to explore on your own terms. Olama, LM Studios, Local GPT, Tails OS, Signal, F-Droid. Make sure you take your power back one decision at a time. Now, thanks so much for watching. I know this was a bit heavier than usual, but it's a combo we need to have. Tech isn't neutral. It reflects the people who build it and the people who question it. So keep asking those questions. Stay curious. And as always, keep it techie. Peace. Yo, what's up, y'all? Listen, if you've been sitting there thinking about making a move, let me tell you, tech is where it's at. I don't care where you're coming from, whether you've got a degree, a GED, or just pure hustle. There's room for you in this game. You see, tech is more than just keyboards and code. It's solving problems, creating opportunities, and building the future. You already have what it takes because tech doesn't care where you start. It cares where you're willing to go. You can teach yourself Linux, learn Python, break into cybersecurity, or even launch your own app. And the resources are out here for free. And yes, you heard me, free. Now, yeah, it's going to take effort. You'll have to grind. But think about this. The time is going to pass anyway. So why not invest it in a skill that'll change your life? I mean, tech doesn't just pay the bills. It opens doors to freedom, stability, and generational wealth. So stop doubting yourself, store small, stay consistent, and keep building. Because this isn't just a career. It's a movement. And guess what? You belong here. So let's get it. Because the future is yours to build. Keep it tech.